Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, good morning. Um, I'm uh, very pleased to um, provide you a, a summary of the discussions we had in a kind of a special panel which uh, uh, looked a bit odd from the start, which combined energy, climate, environment, sustainability, and food supply security. Nonetheless, um, which uh, really showcased that many of these issues are intertwined at the end of the day and will be increasingly as we move uh, forward. Um, we uh, started taking stock of the multiple energy and supply chain crisis the world is in now. So what is obviously a very good news for fossil fuel producers and exporters is increasingly becoming a huge burden for importers and overall sets a big cloud in the global economy as we have uh, very, very sky high gas prices, as we have uh, super high electricity prices, as we have major supply crunches in uh, uh, supply chains, which will increasingly affect um, industries uh, consumption and probably can uh, also impact the pace of the global recovery, not to speak only about inflation but concretely um, about uh, the ability to to lift consumption and uh, and, and supplies and what uh, lately uh, uh, is happening in China I think uh, is in everybody's mind and we are just starting to see the consequences of that. The Chinese are curtailing uh, electricity supplies to a number of factories. Um, they are uh, confronted with a shortage of coal, very high coal prices, uh, not enough electricity uh, is available. And so um, that is uh, the world uh, we are currently facing and I think it complements well the points that you have raised here. Um, we had a pleasure to have a, 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 an outlook of what the future uh, of the energy system could look like by 2050 as the world uh, accelerates its decarbonization by total energy. And, uh, and one striking factor you might be interested in is that uh, in total energy's outlook, uh, peak oil demand is coming before 2030. Uh, nonetheless, don't expect a kind of linear uh, decrease towards a, a, a sharp fall in oil demand. Things will be uh, not linear, but uh, probably uh, very slow at, uh, in the first coming 10 years and, and after we'll have a, a, an uneven decline. Um, which uh, triggered, of course, question as to, especially here in the region, whether investments in upstream oil are still needed. And just to keep basically oil production steady, you have to understand that to compensate the de natural depletion of oil fields, which is about 3% per year, while well, you still require very heavy investment on a yearly basis just to keep uh, oil supply flat. So hence why uh, um, it was stressed that uh, continued investment into oil is, is important. I think the discussion also touched up on the fact that we are now in the middle of two worlds, right? The old world and the new decarbonized world, which is uh, very still uneven and uncertain. Nonetheless, this transitional period will be accompanied, of course, by readjustments and uh, whose pace, etc., cetera, is, uh, is probably going to trigger many uh, disbalances. And obviously, we will face uh, disbalances in the oil uh, and possibly in the gas markets in the years to come. Um, we also uh, uh, touched up on how a, a global oil major, which used to be a global oil major and which is now a, a global energy and, and responsible energy oil major is adapting and, and adjusting its strategy to that and Total Energy outlined that uh, 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 totaling a capex of 15 billion euros per year, 50% is going to low carbon energy solution, which uh, was quite impressive. We then moved on to discuss uh, 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 food security and sustainable food systems and we had an absolutely fascinating uh, presentation and outline uh, by uh, the new uh, Minister uh, for Environment and Climate Change of the UAE, uh, Mariam El Marie. And, and that was absolutely fascinating because the fundamental issue in this country is food supply security. We in Europe are used to energy supply security being a core concern, but here it's food supply security. And we had, I think, a, a very uh, uh, interesting uh, presentation of what is this country's strategy, how it has been coping with the fact that almost all its food products are imported, 
uh, and, and, and hence uh, vulnerable to supply chain disruptions. And, uh, and the, the strategy, I think, uh, looks extremely comprehensive with already clear uh, advances made and, and some of those base, are based on new technologies. Uh, you know, the genome sequencing of seeds, trying to uh, trying to improve uh, water management and, and, and ensuring that water availability is enhanced using sustainable technologies. Um, a food tech valley is being developed. There is a new class of entrepreneurs, agri-tech entrepreneurs, which are being uh, which are uh, developing in this country, and um, and I think that was uh, quite impressive. And, uh, and, and uh, one of the results was that during COVID-19 here, there were no food disruptions in spite of uh, the global uh, disruptions in, in, uh, in trade and, and uh, value chains that we all uh, witnessed. Um, overall, food security, we moved on to discuss two urgencies. Overall, food security in the world remains a major issue. We've seen a major setback in our ability to advance the SDGs globally and notably uh, providing uh, food for everyone on this planet. And, uh, and that should remain a major issue uh, uh, of attention of policymakers around the world. And one thing, two things are sure, according to the discussion we had. First is you cannot have economic development, stability and industrialization if the food supply security issue is not fixed, point A. And point B, if we are to, to feed a, a growing population in the planet, obviously, we have to uh, relook into uh, genetically uh, modified crops, um, and nonetheless also uh, because one has to uh, develop a more resilient agriculture to the number of climate change issues that we are facing. Another burning issue, but that is more a European one, nonetheless it will also increasingly concern the rest of the world, is electricity security supply in times when you move more renewables into the grid and when you phase out the, the dispatchable uh, power generation assets that you have, that is coal, uh, that is in some countries in Europe nuclear, which makes no sense from a climate point of view, but from an ideological point of view obviously pleases you know, certain people. And, uh, and obviously here what is needed is uh, a new regulation, uh, long-term price signals that are conducive to investments and business models to bring in the flexibility in the grid. And here, uh, obviously, there's also room for, I think, uh, greater uh, discussions, not only uh, in Europe, but also uh, with a number of countries in the world that are betting high on renewables. And I think here the region uh, could be an interesting case for that. Um, we also uh, had a conversation on uh, COP26. The good news is the UAE that is hosting us uh, uh, this weekend uh, is, uh, go is, uh, has submitted a second national determined contribution, uh, which I think deserves a lot of praise, uh, especially since we know that a number of OECD economies haven't uh, at all done any effort uh, beyond the NDC submission that they did in 2015, and I'm thinking here about Australia notably. Um, we discussed uh, measures uh, on how we could save CO2 in a hurry. Uh, I think we well identified the real enemy that we are all facing, and this is coal. And so uh, the key message, I think, is really that uh, stopping and ending coal finance is just the first step uh, uh, among uh, many others that need to follow, and those include uh, starting to phase out coal-fired power generation, not only in our Western developed economies, in Europe, in Germany, uh, in the US, but also especially in certain emerging economies and, and South Africa, for example, or, or Indonesia, etc., came uh, in the discussion. Last point uh, before I close, um, I think it's important to have in mind that uh, gas uh, is probably a, a transitional fuel, um, it's uh, largely wrongly identified as the enemy in Europe. Uh, it is required for the flexibility of energy systems. Um, of course, there's high prices these days, but the key focus should be really on, on curbing the fugitive methane emissions, which are very detrimental to global warming. I'll end here. Thank you for your attention.